Now, stop me if you have heard this one before. Once upon a while ago, there was a fisherman's puppet, carefully made by hand. The puppet lived a simple life inside a modern lighthouse, with everything in its place. And every day began the same way when he brushed his wooden teeth. Well, if you don't think wooden teeth need brushing, you've never had a cavity and a splinter at the same time. <laughs> Next, he put a log inside his little stove to warm things up. would get cold in here. The puppet will put a log inside his little stove. Nice and warm, safe from the storm. Next he would take his duster and carefully dust his lucky seashell over there on the shelf. The shell reminded him of the sea when it was calm. Next, the fisherman would open wide his window to check the weather. A quiet sea tonight. Ah. Finally, and most important, every day he would work on his latest model. There, in the center of the room, a perfect model of his own little lighthouse, exact in every detail. It was nearly finished too. Only two pieces needed to be added to the replica. The little model cabinet and the final section of the wall. Yes! The model should be a perfect replica. There was a section of the wall missing and a model cabinet. They must have been around here. Good. Now, the final touch. A tiny puppet of himself to put inside. There. Lucky this model snapped together. Now the little puppet could go in its little rocking chair inside its lighthouse. Tired out from his routine, the fisherman will rest his aching wooden bones in his own rocking chair and go to sleep. And dream of models. Safe inside, where the smell of paint and glue was always fresh, where the world was simple and snapped together, the puppet would follow his routine, brush his wooden teeth, dust his lucky shell, and work on his model. Within worlds, walls within walls, closing out the storm so it could never reach inside. Until one night, something changed.
much waiting out there somewhere, but hold your hauling lines. Reports are saying a huge storm is blowing in. It might be nothing, but better safe than salvage, I always say. Coming up next, another hour of thrilling nautical news after these messages. Every morning, the fisherman peppered to walk inside his mother lighthouse with everything in its place. And he began his day the same way. Except this morning, something felt different. Mon Dieu, the window had been boarded up. The fisherman didn't remember doing that. Even when the storm came, he was safe in here. But no two silly planks of wood were going to get between him and his routine. The boards were nailed on. He would need some kind of tool. He couldn't get them off by hand. Ah, this would do. What was it Papa used to say? Use the right tool for the right job. Nearly there. What was this feeling? The fisherman hadn't felt like this for a long time. At last, the smell of the ocean. But outside, not the sea. He couldn't believe his wooden eyes. Outside the room was another room. A replica room. And standing in it, a huge but very familiar figure of a fisherman. And he knew that if that huge figure were to turn, its face would be very familiar. Sacre bleu! If this was what lay outside, then what was inside his own little model lighthouse, in the model of his own room? It was all there inside the model, exact in every detail, but the tiny version of himself, it was moving. He was inside the model, he was outside the model, and just, just who was pulling all the strings? A general alert to all lighthouses, in spite of all of our thrilling up-to-the-minute warnings, a lone boat has gone out into the storm. Lighthouse keepers, make sure your lights are shining bright. I repeat, a lone boat has gone out into the storm. The lighthouse. The world might be folding in on itself, but only one thing mattered now. He had to turn on the lighthouse lamp high above. The life of a fellow sailor was at stake. A huge anchor blocked the only door. Whoever did it must really want to keep the storm out or keep something in. Of course, as below, so above. When he lifted the tiny anchor, the large one was lifted by his giant self. Zut! The door was locked. He must have put the key somewhere last time he left this room. Now, when was that? And then, my friends, the strangest thing happened. Inside this room where he knew every cranny and nook, an unfamiliar voice said, Hey! Hey, you! Yes, you, the scruffy-looking puppet! Yeah, you with the strings! Over here! On the shelf! Are you cracked in the cockle? Why did you move the anchor? Why? Oh, why did you take the roof off? The fisherman. He felt... Uh, well, his lucky shell had just started talking to him. And very rudely too. So he did not feel so great. You test me every day and you thought I just had nothing to say? I'm an hermit cop, Sonny. And you might not appreciate a nice quiet hiding spot, but I do. Now, shh. 
And what are we hiding from? I'm hiding from the storm. Why do you think I stole the key? The key? The, the key? Where is it? Oh, fiddler crab sticks. The fisherman took a deep breath. Oh, hermit crab, craftiest of all crustaceans, I must get to the top of the lighthouse. Those sailors out there may be looking for us. We must be brave. Brave? Brave? If you can't find me my hat, I will be the captain, of course. And the captain needs his hat and a life preserver, just in case. Then, uh, uh, just this once, we will be brave. Well, of course, courageous Captain Crab, said the fisherman. Your hat and a life preserver. Now, where would an everyday wooden puppet find a tiny life preserver and a hat fit for a crab? More buoyant already. Now I just need a hat. <laughs> How else will people know I'm in charge? Hmm? How's it going? The storm is getting closer. I'm not joking. Something? Show me! Show me! I won't move until I manage... Uh, perhaps a smaller hat. One that can be worn at a jaunty angle. So? Did you find something? Let's have a look. The captain is not so. You found everything? Well, if a little wooden puppet like you can do this, then uh, I will be brave. Now, just let me get out of. This damn <laughs> shell. Ah. <coughs> Phew. Oh. Really, I feel so much lighter, and the world feels so much bigger. I don't think I can go back into my shell after this. All right, let's do this. I'll help you open the door so you can save your fellow silly old sailor. And I, as captain, shall courageously remain here, on guard. Now, let's see. Where did I leave the key? I was holding the key while I was repairing my shell. Then I had a sudden itch, and then blast it. I don't remember. The crab had lived his whole life inside this little shell. No bigger than the fisherman's hand. But he was safe. I've lost the key, mon ami. Forget your poor sailor. You'll never be able to save him. Almost. Got it. Ready? Me too, I think. You're hesitating, shipmate.
We are ready to go, shipmate. Time to open the door. Farewell, shipmate. I won't forget what you did for me. Your captain salutes you. He would need to find his way up the tower in the darkness. And already could hear the storm rising outside. Fans, and remember, no catch is worth risking life and limb, even if it is the biggest, richest, fishiest catch you've ever seen. And to all you lighthouse keepers out there, keep those brights on. This one's for you. fish Papa ever caught. The fisherman had spent all his life trying to land a catch as big as that. Well, don't you look like a drink of <coughs> water? It was still alive. This went against everything he had learned. He had to get the fish some water. This section of wall seemed loose. Of course, he had forgotten to glue this part of the model. It was only held on with two latches. He must find some water for the poor creature. might say they were success. <laughs> too much, too much success. Water flooded into the model. <gasps> Quick, hold your breath. The water closed over him and the memories came flooding back. The coolness, the darkness, the ocean tossing and turning him like a, like a rag doll. 
Wait a minute. Puppets can't drown. No, a bit of water wouldn't stop this fisherman. It seemed Papa had forgotten food. to feed his stuffed fish. Is there fish. food out here? <laughs> there must be food. Food! Who are you, oh noble fish? And do you know how to reach the top of the lighthouse? The fisherman asked. I'm a big-eyed tuna. My eyes are even bigger than my stomach. And if you want to go upstairs, my little amusbosh, well, you'll have to feed me first. Hmm. There must be food out here. Nothing? I'll starve. Any second now, I shall succumb to hunger. If only you find me some food. They smelled... Mm, vintage. But a stuffed fish could hardly be picky. own appetite, and also a fishbone. Oh. He had to climb inside the mouse. The fisherman was afraid. How many of this fish's family had he pulled from the sea in search of the biggest catch? But how do I know you won't eat me? The fisherman asked. Oh, oceans and her. Also, I mean, you're made of wood and probably lead-based bent. No, there was the bone of contention. <sighs> Thank you, fisherman. I, I could not get it off, you know. I wanted more, always, like an obsession. But you, leggy land walkers, wouldn't know anything about that. Of course, you have everything, don't you? Well, what could the puppet say to that? Now, I must repay you. The key to the tower door is outside. I saw a huge figure hide it near the mirror a long time ago. Outside? A huge figure? Could it be... Papa? Take me there! cried the fisherman. I'm certain it was around here. Climb on in. <sighs> Welcome aboard, Fish Flight 123. Please keep your arms inside the mouse at all times, and no splinters, please. Hmm. How's your seat, sir? There was plenty of legroom, but the view left something to be desired. And there was a distinct smell of... Oh yes, sardines. Your step. <sighs> the 
key was too high. He needed something. Uh, perhaps back in the lighthouse, there might be something he could use. He only needed to find the key. fish was around the mirror when it was trying to show where the key was. Thank you for helping me, the fisherman said. Of course, you helped me see that there is more to life than the largest moss wool. Sometimes a smaller morsel is sweeter, juicier and more delectable. Whatever next, the sauce, little morsel. Thank you for setting me free. I hope you reach the top of the tower. The door opened. The lighthouse tower waited. The fisherman had begun to think that he had all the answers. But he would soon realize he had bitten off maybe more than he could chew. Come in, trawler. Come in, trawler. If you can hear us, return to port immediately. I repeat, return to port immediately. Papa's old study. This was where the fisherman had learned to make models. Sitting at Papa's knee, listening to Papa's gruff, scratchy voice telling him to try again, try again, and next time get it right. The fisherman was nearly there, but something in this room seemed different, like he was being watched. of his father, the, the great fisherman. It was talking. Quiet, I'm talking. My only child, my flesh and blood. You could have been as great a sailor as me, or my father before me. Ah, Papa, that you had lived to see this day. Papa, said the puppet, I must light the lighthouse lamp. A ship is in peril. My own son, a mere lamp lighter. A landlubber. Nonsense. All you need is a boat and a strong net. Show your true sea dog and sail out there. Maybe you're good for something. 
Keep going. You won't get far with Alpha Boat. Where is the next part? Upstairs was rusted shut. Besides, Papa had given him an order, and a true sailor always obeys the skipper. The controls of the old lighthouse crane were there on the balcony. The huge half flooded room surrounded him, and below, he could see the tiny replica of the room. Your mother would be sad to see this day. Not me, of course. I was always a very supportive parent. My own son, the lighthouse keeper. Mother would be sad to see this day. Hurt me, of course. I was always a very supportive parent. My own son, a lighthouse keeper. of you yet.
No, a craft. No, an art. A border craft. <laughs> I'm writing that down. There, that's a good, honest vessel. Well, what are you waiting for? All aboard! Now, pack it at the pontoon. Then we'll see who's too big for his father's boat. <clears throat> That's right, boy. We are bound for the biggest catch of our lives. Stay on course. Can't you do anything right? Let this be a lesson to you. Even great sailors like me can. And the battery ran out. Well, find another battery. East by Narcist, full steam! Look at you. You look almost like a real sailor. If I squint. Thanks, Papa. Morning, fish man. Fishing season has begun and stocks are looking thin again this year. We all know there's a big catch waiting out there somewhere, but hold your hauling lines. Reports are saying a huge storm is blowing in. <laughs> the storm it's approaches. That's when the fish come easily, say. my son. Coming up next, another hour of thrilling nautical news after these messages. The fish are waiting. Activate the winch. Drop the nets. In the art of the storm! This is where nature hides its beauties! They are waiting for us! <laughs> Forget, boy! Come back with a hold full of fish, or don't come back at all!
son. Are you there? Yes! Hold on, son. Hold on. <coughs> we have got guts, boy. I will give you that. Go, then, if you must. Climb the tower. Light the lamp. Save any other poor souls who are sailing out there. Driven on by the disappointed fathers. I only wanted you to be greater than me. But I didn't. Au revoir, papa. Then, the fisherman thought of all the countless fish he had hauled from the ocean on a line just like this one, just like his father before him. But there was one difference. Those poor fishes were dragged out of their dark, safe world and into the blinding light by force. But no one was pulling this fisherman's strings. As he climbed the hook, he thought of all the models he had built, all the days he had spent inside the lighthouse, hiding from his fear. I don't know what you've been hiding from, but I've been hiding from the storm! His greed. You, land lovers, have everything you want, don't you? His obsession, that shadow which had seemed so large once upon a time. The greatest catch ever is out there with this. It's just waiting for us. Here we go. At last, time to turn on the light. Outside, the storm raged, and it seems the rules of the replica had been completely disrupted. Inside the lighthouse, little versions of the puppet were reflected back at him, getting even smaller, and there was only one match left to turn on the lighthouse. Was there anybody out there in the storm? Who knows? But for now, at least, he had one job. He was a lighthouse keeper. Now, if he could only find a match... The matchbox was empty. <laughs> a match. Now something to strike it on. Lamps must be lit around him and inside the model, too. were lit, but there was nowhere near enough light. Perhaps his little friends inside the model could help out.
were little lamps inside the model. How could he light them? Yes! Now, carefully, the next level down. I can rest now, knowing my obsession did not drag you down with me. Goodbye, little morsel. Bon voyage, shipmate. Outside, not the store. A room, bare. But, mon dieu, who has that... that beard, that face? He, he was awake. Hey! Hey, the puppet cried. I'm in here! I've been in here all this time! I'm in here! Is it? <coughs> what a mess. Do you know? I think I've been in here long enough. I think I need to see the sea. Another storm. Fisherman, enough mending your nets. Time to earn your keep. And to all you lighthouse keepers out there, I think you deserve a holiday. How long has it been? Well, no matter. Encore the way. Now, stop me, if you've heard this one before. You always say that, Papa. Ha! And yet you never stop me. But, little Nina, perhaps you do not want a story? Tell the story! Tell it, tell it! But of course! <laughs> I had set sail on my greatest adventure, to discover the fabled Isle of Libertalia. You remember? I told
told you of Libertalia, Nina. The land of truth, freedom. That's right. The greatest prize for a sailor. My destiny. But this time, my plans had gone. Well, all to pieces. seen a bit of the world, from legendary fisherman to heroic lighthouse keeper to now treasure hunter. So this was not the first time your papa had to pick himself up and piece himself back together. So there I was, just another jumble of jetsam, washed up on an unfamiliar shore, completely broke. Again. No doubt about it, I needed to pull myself together. How long did you just lie there, Papa? I didn't just lie, I was missing two things that every sailor needs. Now, what could they be? Your sea legs. Every sailor needs their sea legs. Ha! Now I remember. I had to regain my sea legs. Ha! Now I was beginning to pull myself together. Now I could stand on my own two feet. But still, I was rolling around like a drunken sailor. I needed to get my head on straight. Back then, I'd forget my own head if someone didn't remind me. There was just one thing left. You've forgotten your hand, Papa! I needed to grasp the situation with both hands. Ha! But of course! <laughs> so there I was, Nina. Marooned. No ship, no prospects. The current had carried me here, and I couldn't swim against it. So you just popped your head off, Papa? Will I be able to do that when I grow up? Ah, uh, better check with me before you try it, Nina. Now I could take a good look around. Progress! Soon I would escape, make my fortune, find Libertalia, and true freedom. An appetite for adventure, little Nina. But first... Food. A sailor needs a full belly to keep body and soul together. I reached for the coconut, awake with hunger. Got it! Now, little shipmate, what do we do with coconuts, huh? Smash them! Keep going! Smash Success! My mouse watered. 
Oi! What's this? Who's stealing my coconuts? That was when I heard a familiar voice. There, perched on the rock, an old rival of mine, cunning and devious. These coconuts are to feed my family. You cast off or cast away. Unlike you, I have responsibilities. Of course, I offered him my hand, but as always, he seized the advantage. When sailors disagree, little shipmate, sooner or later, someone starts to throw hands. This time it was my turn. It was a duel for the ages, but finally, I got the upper hand. Then, treachery gave him a chance and that crabby landlubber would take an arm and a leg. But my old rival had another trick up his sleeve. Oh. You see, he tried to turn my head, make me see things his way. He had my head in his clutches. I needed to free myself. Got him at last. Now, little shipmate. What do we say when we triumph? No one takes a piece out of Bob. Bob, the, the legendary, legendary sailor. sailor. Yay! Yay. Okay, I yield. <laughs> Let's make a deal. If you give me one of those handy hands of yours, I'll give you my claw. Those nimble, bendy fingers will help me smash coconuts. And I'm sure you could use a powerful pinch. Give me your hand. For all time's sake. Here is my clue. It's my best one. I promise. <laughs> Merci, Bob. Now, no more leaving clue to mouse for my family. Now, escape. There had to be a way out of this little cove. I saw a gate earlier, blocking the way. Perhaps my new glow could help. signs of life. A gate that was bound shut. Snip, snip! <laughs> it was high time I got off this beach. But how? I thought I could smell... the smoke? Look up, Papa! Look up! Oh! At least I knew what had happened to my boat. Ah, le téméraire. Tell me, Nina, if every part of a boat is repaired or replaced, until not a plank of the original remains, is it still the same boat? Well, what does the boat think? True wisdom, little shipmate. <laughs> now, our way for what was blocked. The bridge was broken. But... I suppose I could use the washed-up planks from Paul de Le Temeraire.
I only needed a few planks. Climb out with a hand and a claw. I needed something to help me climb. The solution had to be somewhere on that beach. Hmm. <laughs> it seemed I wasn't the first to wash up on this particular shore. The shack was shut up tight for anyone except old Bob, that is. Plenty of friends and buccaneers had passed through before me, and left their mark. Like who? Ah, my old shipmate, Gutless Jack, greeted me with a grin. <laughs> the years had not been kind to him. Not like your papa. <laughs> Lucky for me, fellow sea dogs were always willing to lend a hand. You see, when you find yourself on strange shores, you have to adapt if you want to change your fortune. No pirate, merely a uh, she going scoundrel, and you, Nina, will fly higher than I ever did. I was shipwrecked, alone, marooned. But when you've hit rock bottom, my petite, there's only one way to go. Up. But it would be hard going with only one hook. I was out of that little backwater. A campfire! I saw signs of life. 
But then, a chill came over me. Out in the harbor, a huge mothership. I knew that vessel, oh yes. It seemed I had stumbled on the island hideaway of Captain Kenred and her bloodthirsty pirate crew. Sinister figures crowded around. They had found me. I put up my hooks, ready to fight it out. But... They didn't get you, Papa. Did they? What happens next? Well, back to reality, Nina. Uh, are you there, Nina? Darling? Hello? Um, I'm here, Mum. Are you okay? I'm fine, darling. How are you getting on down there? Are you... are the models all packed up? Oh, um, no. I I've made a good start, though. I hope you haven't just been playing around. The hours you and Bob used to spend making his models while he told you all those old stories. All right, come on, Nina. Let's do one more box. Yeah, I remember the story that went with this one. Bob imprisoned by the dreaded Captain Kenrid. There's the cage, now we need the prisoner. Where are you, Bob? Every story needs a hero. I left Bob in the other model. Papa, when you first met Mum, did she like you right away? Ah, well, uh, not instantly. What about you? Was it love at first sight? <laughs> but to understand that story, you must hear how I escaped the bloodthirsty Budmer pirates. But first, we need a fearsome pirate ship. Pass me the clue. Now you're mine, Bob! <laughs> Cried Captain Kenred with a hideous laugh. Soon you will be in the clutches of the Kraken! We'll see about that, said Bob. <laughs> Uncanny impression, Bob. You really nailed the hideous laugh. Captain Kenred? Did you hear that? Uh, that he's... Uh, uh, uh... You tell her, Papa. <laughs> they say you're a fine sailor, Bob. But I didn't know you were a storyteller. My... My greatest story is yet to come, Kenred. The tale of how I escaped the Bonne Mer and visited a captain. So there. I'd heard you were a wit as well. I see the stories were half right. I hope you're ready to work, Bob. You don't have to be in one piece to scrub grog pots. And if you work hard, we'll put you back together. Uh, I... Um... Curse you, Kenred! You cannot keep me from my quest, Kenred. I shall find Libertalia. Libertalia! Bob, no one ever gets to Libertalia. Don't you know that? Don't tell me that that's what you're all about. The land of perfect freedom? I searched for it too, Bob. There's no such place. Like I said, if you stay here and work, we'll put you back together. Look, 
I've got to go. I never let my men carouse without me. Bad form. Well, yes, that would be bad form. Uh, a noble sentiment. Perhaps if we were not mortal adversaries, we could have been shipmates. Right, sure. Limitalia. So, there I was, captive of a cruel, yet strangely compelling pirate captain. So, how did you get out of the clutches? This would be my greatest escape yet. I was sure I could get one hand free. I wouldn't get far without my sea legs. There you go. In a cage nearby, I could see the claw my old rival had given me. I had to unlock the cage. Now things were coming together. My head had got me into this mess. Now my head would have to get me out. Yeah! No one takes a piece out of old Bob. Shh! Yes, yes. Our hero was back in one piece. Now, to escape! They had put me in the hold, like common cargo. I had to unlock the door. Ha! Sailor, storyteller, escapologist. Is there anything Bob can't do? Ugh. The secret passage ahead was locked, but this old head of mine still held a few secrets. <laughs> Models always had a little secret trap door somewhere, didn't they? No wonder you always escaped in your stories. Shh, little shipmate. We're trying to escape, remember? Through the porthole, I spied my boat, Le Temeraire. This curvy dogs had commandeered him. Nothing for it, I had to commandeer him back. The ship was in some disrepair. I had to fix the elevator control to go up. What did Captain K 
Kenrid mean when she said she'd put you back together? Well, perhaps Kenrid was not quite as fierce and cruel as her reputation. Formidable, to be sure. The engine room. What a beast. Getting to the other side would take every ounce of my cunning. Again, Bob must climb ever upwards. If only I still had a climbing hook. Now we could make progress. So, I would need to repair another of the pirate's machine. The feared one there was falling apart. I made it would not be far away. All these moving parts, why did he build these models and tell these stories over and over? Is this why you like building models? As you're always fixing machines. Ah, yes. Again, I was fixing the pirate's ship for them. Looked like I needed several cogs. There would be spare cogs somewhere inside the ship's giant engine. There should be one last cog laying around.
from my quest for true freedom. Ah, the captain's cabin. Kenred said she, too, had searched for Libertalia. Perhaps there were clues. Legend said that to enter Libertalia, you must sacrifice a great treasure. If Kenred gave up on the quest, perhaps her treasure was still here. Treasure. I had to find the key, and quickly. Got it. An experienced treasure hunter. I made quick work of the search. Kenred's treasure, a mystical jeweled egg. This would get me into Libertalia. And, like the proverbial thief, um, treasure hunter in the night, I was gone. <clears throat> was the egg in my back? On the upper decks, state of the art security. No surprise with the treasure I'd found. I'd need an extra pair of hands to access the control room. This ship had far too many spare hands on deck. Hmm.
spy out, all you law-abiding lovers. The first mate of the fearsome Captain Kenrod has been sighted ashore at the Bloon Lagoon. Remember, the senior crew of the dreaded Bon Mare can be identified by the tattoos on their hands. A golden guinea reward is offered for their capture, so keep an eye out for hand tattoos. Mm-hmm. Kenred had told me about the crew's party. With all of them sleeping like stones, I could safely explore their quarters. I would need a safe pair of hands. I remember asking if you had any tattoos, Papa. Your mother has forbidden me to answer that. There, on the deck, my ship, Le Temeraire. Looks like they had already repaired him. Done a nice job, too. My ship was in dry dock. I had to use the crane to move it. Crane control box was locked. <laughs> if I wanted to control the crane, I had to become the crane. There, in the corner, a wind system which would free the Temeraire. If I could slide him over to it, I would have to move those big cargo containers out of the
will be at sea in no time. got there in the end, Papa. But why did you make such complicated models? Life is complicated, Nina. I can't just walk over. How do I get myself to the boat? was at hand, but then my heart stopped. Who should leap aboard Le Temeraire but... Captain Kenred. Not so fast, Bob. <laughs> you have something of mine. Um, Kenred, don't try to stop me. This treasure will grant me passage into Libertalia. You're a fool, Bob, and you don't know what you're playing with. The Kraken's egg is a magical link that can't be broken. Give me the egg. You are an egg. Ha! You're an idiot. Bob, that is not some treasure. It's a responsibility. And frankly, you don't seem the responsible type. I am Bob, you big island Birkenir, and I will be the one to rid Red. <sighs> the Kraken's egg, it's split in half. And Kenred... You, you see, Nina, when you have met a... a worthy opponent, victory is not always so sweet. Damn, Papa. I'd forgotten that part. And the sound the Kraken made? Not exactly Saturday morning cartoon stuff. No wonder Mum was always annoyed at your stories. Nina? Darling? Are, are you there? Hi Mum. How are you feeling? You must be nearly finished packing up your father's stuff. I'm so glad you're taking it just never could face it. It's okay, Mum. I, I feel like I'm connecting with him, you know? I was so young. Hello? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the nurse is here. Who is this? You were telling me about Bob, Mum. Vous avez dû faire un faux numéro. Bob? Non, désolé, personne ne te l'a dit. Bob est parti. It's okay, Mum. I know. Bob isn't around anymore. God, she's just slipping away. Right, come on. Let's box some stuff up. Let's do the weird little room at the back. I can't put it off anymore. I remember this. Papa made it when I was born as my first toy, but Mum always said it would give me nightmares. Oh, I remember this story, Papa. You converted a fish tank for underwater models so you could tell the story of the map to Libertalia. And 
when mum made you take me for a bath, you finished the story with me in the tub, splashing around being the Kraken. We got water everywhere, and you got in trouble again. Temeraire is missing only one thing. It's Captain. Nearly at Libertalia at last, eh, Papa? A life of adventure and freedom. I mean, sign me up. So, there I was, a few weeks older and wiser since my encounter with Captain Kenwin. I had escaped with Alpha Loot to pay my way into Libertalia. Now, all I needed was to find it. I was aboard my beloved boat, Temeraire, the wind at my back, and with only one more step to reach true freedom. Legend said that the map of Libertalia was lost aboard the Spanish galleon that sank at this very coordinates. Okay, Papa. So, you were a diver too? But of course. Never much of a swimmer, I will admit. But I always had a talent for sinking. First, nothing for it, but to dive to the watery depth. Ah, la mer. The galleon had sunk amid a maze of rocks and coral. And worse, explosive deep sea mines. Impossible to reach. Also, they said, but I had a plan, and it would go perfectly this time around. You see, I had tried once already, in a small submarine of my own design, but there was a navigational miscalculation, and I was forced to float to safety. This time, I was determined. My submarine, the Ringo. She could plot the treacherous path to the galleon. But like a captain, she had lost a few pieces here and there. A propeller, a spring, a key, oh mon dieu. But fortunately, everything I needed could be salvaged from the wrecks of other, less committed treasure hunters. I wouldn't find submarine pieces down there, but plenty of other places to explore. We need two hooks to fully explore the area.
should I meet in those depths but an old friend? I remember. The biggest fish ever caught by man. The one that got away. <laughs> well, she did seem a little smaller than I remembered. But this time, she seemed firmly cut. Is that you, Bob? Get me out of here. I was scavenging crap for my kids, and I got snagged. So, you got tied down, my old friend. Meanwhile, I'm on the edge of true freedom. You'll understand one day, Bob. Look, cut me loose, and I help you out. saved you last time. <laughs> That's not how I remember it. You're going after the wreck, aren't you? I can help, and I think you can help me. Close your eyes. There, a nice swishy fish tail will help you find your way through the coral. And I'll keep hold of your lubbery legs. Hey, these are pretty good. Maybe I could go stroll into one of your surfer's supermarkets to find food for my kids. Uh -huh. And with that, I was a merbob. <laughs> now, I could swim and could search high and low for the missing parts. This trench device would do for a propeller. Why was there a big fan under the sea? The ocean is full of mysteries. Now we were getting somewhere. Remember, during 
my earlier mishap, I left key to the Ringo in this chest for safekeeping. I'm not having some merman make off with my ride. So, it was a wind-up submarine, was it? Of course. <laughs> there is no fuel more reliable than a little help of grease. Ew. Spiny urchins. This would take a gentle hand. Why I built a Dringo. Deep sea mines. But with my powerful arms, I can send the mines flying. Time to show what you can do, Ringo. Boom! No more rock. <laughs> Feel the might of Ringo. bath when you told me this part. Mum asked you if you really had to splash so much water just to tell a story. Only when you do it properly.
it. It was an honor to sail with you. Poor Ringo. The Dancella. If the legend was true, somewhere inside the hell lay the map to Libertalia. Explore the wreck, looking for a way inside. the map. Where is the map? They must have hidden it when the ship began to sink. I am so close. 
I had survived the depths. It had been my greatest trial. But surely now, my greatest reward. But as I returned to the Temeraire, a strange light showed where I had hidden my treasure. My half of the jeweled egg had gained a mystical glow. That, but that could only mean... Captain Kenrid! And suddenly, I spied a sail on the horizon. The Bonnaire. Captain Kenrid had found me. Bob? Bob, the sea dog! I know that's you! Kenrid. She was pursuing me. But of course, it was the egg that led her to me. Oh, sacre bleu, not again. Not now. I told you before, Bob. The egg is not a prize, it's a responsibility. And now you've awakened her. I felt the steering in the ocean below me. Could it be at last? The pitiless hunter, the terror of the deep. The Kraken! Yes, the beast was chasing the Bonne Mer. Perhaps breaking the egg had disturbed the creature. Damn you, Bob! Kenred was facing it alone, but I had the map. And now, nothing was standing between me and Libertalia. So, I turned. I set my sails for freedom, and I left the sound of the Kraken's roar behind me. I've forgotten that bit. Not exactly heroic stuff, Papa. Why did you tell the story that way? Are these photos? No, projector slides. Why were they inside the model? We definitely have a projector somewhere. Mum used to show us holiday pictures. Let's try these slides in the projector. see a screen anywhere. It must be buried in here somewhere. Ugh, I'll take care of that later. Hello? He hello? Can you hear me? Here we go. Just like yesterday. Bob? Are you down there? Is Nina with you? Oh. Oh no. She told me the other night that she wanted to be a pirate when she grew up, Bob. A pilot, Mum. I wanted to be a pilot. I don't want you filling her head with, with flights of fancy, Bob. Bob. She's getting worse. I have to talk to her about options. I'll do it tomorrow. I just want to remember the stories a little longer. Let's see. So, Libertalia at last, eh, Bob? You always said you'd tell me how the story ended, and you never did. Okay, Bob. Let's put you in the model. Let's hear it. What did you find in the land of freedom? I don't think I remember this bit of the story. So, there I was. But where was I? Could it be Libertalia at last?
yourself on my rocks, Captain. Come. Libertalia seems kind of grubby. Welcome to the Libertalia. Enchanté. V. Libertalia? Looking for some spice? Or sugar? Whatever you want, we have it all. The only thing you won't find here are regrets. Except the ones you bring with you, of course. My only regret, madame, is not arriving sooner. Now, uh, where do I... Papa, this place is weird. What did she mean by sugar? Why are we here? You have brought a suitable tribute. Place it here then, darling. A great day, broken. Well... I guess it will have to do. Though the one thing people always bring here that I do not want is their past. I hope you have left yours at the door. And now let the party begin. Come closer, darling. Take a half of this. Breathe away for that. And dance your heart away. Drink up, sing. Have a taste of this freedom and all of its pleasures. Come on, drink this. Oh, freedom has a taste. And it is not always sweet. But there was plenty to wash it down. She beckoned me towards the sounds of dancing. This was it. arrived in time for a party. Ah, I could feel the music, feel my doubts leaving me. It was intoxicating. Once or twice upon a time, drank on freedom, filling my mind. Friends and rivals are left behind, so this was liberty, it was mine. No, Papa! It, it's so embarrassing! Get out of here now!
my puck in my prime, I sew my ship, and there on the deck, my young self before the wreck, oh, once or twice upon the time. isn't the story I thought it was, Papa. I had been through the haze. I wanted freedom from my past. But regret is always just ahead of you, like a riff. So twice upon the tide, I became a fisherman, following my father's plan and fishing for my father's pride. So you were a fisherman? Without a break, pulling bounty from the sea. Father said this life was free as I followed in his wake. And your papa was a fisherman too? So twice upon a time, I was a young fisherman, weighing anchor with no plan, whether be ugly or fine. So this was long before you met Mum?
those that need a guiding The days go by, I'm sinking And the light upstairs is fading Papa, you deserved better
running from? She wants it you And the sand said slowly What will you do? The beast is sinking But not for you And she'll pay The price And you always knew You left her behind So twice a part of time Was a coward And didn't see That you can hide on the open sea But won't escape the storm inside your mind Left my heart Fuzz on behind Could I be sorry? Could you be brave? For once For twice For all of time I have been watching, boy And I'm not impressed Papa? Is that... My grandfather? Papa, I'm sorry. I wasn't a true sailor like you. No, boy, you weren't. Just like I was not the sailor my father wanted me to be. But you had a chance to be greater than what came before. Now look at you. Papa, the Kraken is coming. You didn't turn tail even when you sailed into that storm, boy. Trust me, this Kraken you can face. I was afraid of losing my freedom. Losing a part of myself. We lose parts of ourselves all the time, boy. And we pick up others. It is not too late for you. Here is my clue. It's my best one. I promise. <laughs> now I understood. Even my true freedom. Everything I had been seeking. Each line of story I had woven for myself. Each string that led back to the past. To father. Everything I sought I had escaped. was the past, far behind me. He would always lie ahead of me, like a tempest on the horizon. Unless I trim sail and rend the storm, now. Giving you a refund, Bob. Your half treasure isn't worth much incomplete anyway. Freedom isn't something you bury in a chest. It is something you do. You told a fine story, Bob. We all heard it. But what ending do you want? <sighs> Kenred, what have I done? You, and you just sailed off. 
Maybe he wasn't who I thought he was. Oh, Mum. There's still so much I wanted to ask you. Now, I I'm just talking to myself. Just like bloody Bob. Okay. Projection screen is ready. There has to be an end to the story. Do I really want to see this? Come on, Nina. There. Ah, Bob. When I first met him, he was in pieces. After what happened in the storm, he'd shut himself up in a lighthouse for God knows how many years. Finally, he plucks up the courage to get out and start some harebrained adventure. And pretty soon he washes up a bag of bits on my doorstep. So there I was, Nina, marooned. No ship, no prospects. The current had carried me here, and I couldn't swim against it. Papa? Like I said, if you stay here and work, we'll put you back together. Le Bonne Mer. A, a sailor's bar. They never told me that. You see, when you find yourself on strange shores, you have to be willing to adapt if you want to change your fortune. <laughs> they say you're a fine sailor, Bob. But I didn't know you were a storyteller. Well, one thing leads to another, I suppose. <laughs> but he was restless. He was always talking about freedom. He said one day he'd go make his fortune and then he'd marry me. Well, I'd heard that before. At last, I am so close to true freedom. When I am in Libertalia, then, then everything will make sense. It must. And then one day, he was gone. Except, of course, he'd already left a little piece of himself behind. Which rapidly grew into a big piece. The crew wanted to chase him down and kill haul him. I thought, well, if he didn't want to stay, good riddance. Of course, he didn't get very far. And then, all of a sudden, one day Bob, the roamer, the dreamer, he finally made up his mind. Kenred, what have I done? Oh, it's jammed, damn thing. There has to be more. I can't believe I trusted him. Every story he told me. He was just trying to make his own sad, stupid decision seem like, like, like an adventure. Because I remember this last story. This is the story we never got to, when Bob met the Kraken. Ha! Huh. I always knew monsters weren't real, but I really hope that you were, Dad. Go on then, Bob. What have you got to say for yourself? There I was, as if waking from a dream, I left Libertalia behind. What a fool I had been. The Kraken was coming, and with the egg broken, it would never rest, never stop searching. I knew that all too well. I was not going to leave Kenred to deal with that alone. 
I would make the egg whole, even if, after that, she never wanted to see me again. The creature was tearing the Budmer apart. I'm coming, Kenred! The ship won't hold for long. The fury of the Kraken was the stuff of legend, but I couldn't blame the creature. Shoot alors! The proud Bonmer was being torn asunder. Kenred! Bob! Go back to your precious Libertalia! Coward! I can handle this myself. Easy now! Easy! Is this what you want? Come on, take it! Come on! Kenred! Kenred! The egg was me! Uh, we can fix this? Oh, now you're sorry, Rob! Now! I was seized by one of the creature's mighty tentacles. Uh, I could not free myself! I would have to use my wits to escape. Let go of me, you sorry squid! I have to get out of here! Train control. Perfect. It would destroy the crane if I tried to, to arm wrestle the beast. But I could move all the stuff around. I know that. 
But we can take it on together. Go get her, Bob! So, there I was, inside the beast. Above me, I could see the glow of the broken egg. Think, Bob, think. I had to raise the water level. So, if I gave the beast a little tickle on one of those glands, it would take in more water. looked up. The next gland was far, far above. I would have to climb through the wreckage of the Bonne Mer to reach it. Many of the crew made it. Privateers, you have to help me save the captain. Kenred's crew, the poor devils were all over the place. I had to give them a hand. Over here. I'll need their help to go forward. Can you hear me? I'm here. back, Bob. Over here.
<sighs> if I could only stand on my own two feet. I'll have to search for all their different pieces. <sighs> if I could only stand on my own two feet... We ought to kill all you for what you did, Bob! cried the grateful pirate crew. But the captain said you'd be back. Come on, we'll make a way for you. There, all present and accounted for. <laughs> Go and find our captain. Now, I had to ride the ship's rails one last time. I had to hurry. Kenred needed me. Together, we could calm the Kraken.
My journey had taken me to some strange places, but this was the strangest. I looked the beast deep in its gigantic eyes, almost as though I could step inside them. Above me, in the beast's main heart, I could see the green glow from Mary's half of the hag. That's where she was. That's where I needed to go. How can I climb up there? I'll need a fish tail if I want to reach the heart. I was ready for what would come. Kenrit, I hope I'm not too late. The glow! It's coming from the creature's heart, but it's not beating! No, no, come on, beast! Kenrit and I are going to take care of you together! We must unite the heart of the Kraken! I mean, I have to be there before it's too late. You know what you have to do, right?
Yes, together. Mary. Mary, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, now you're sorry, Bob. lot of time to make up, but as far as this baby is concerned, we're in this together, Bob. Stories are all very well, but the endings always let them down. Real life is in all the sequence, not in really ends, does it dear? Me? <laughs> I always liked a happily ever after. You would. <laughs> Mum, Papa, real life was even better than the story. I promise. So, there I was, the great adventurer, Nina. At last I had found the map to my father's mysterious treasure. And now, I knew what I had to do. Time to get rid of this damn cast. <sighs> That's better. Now me if you've heard this one before. Someone told me once that every cell in our body gets replaced every seven years. Is a ship still the same ship after every plank and nail's been replaced? Maybe it's up to the ship. Or maybe it's in the ones who sailed with you. You never planned to tell me the whole story, did you, Papa? You wanted me to find it for myself. So, there I was. All my life, my father had told me stories of treasure hunting adventure. But when I followed his map, it led me back to where it all began. The lighthouse. Our first home. I, I mean, the place where he discovered the secret of true freedom. Hmm. Well, I think I know how the pieces fit together now. Just one more story. So, we faced the creature together, Mary and I. 
the greatest of adventures. It had its ups, its downs, its false starts, and its bitter ends, and it kept going. This is where he built his models and the Kraken. Always I wanted to be the hero. For if I was not, I was afraid life would wash me away. But instead, I was washed up on an unfamiliar shore. Uh, what is a sailor to do but explore? But how does it end, Papa? Libertalia? I found my Libertalia. My Nina. If I had my way, her world would have no edges at all. But she would have to discover for herself. All I could do was leave her enough clues and hope she did not make my mistakes. So, I told my tales, and perhaps my beautiful little shipmate was better for it. Certainly, I was. Now, stop me if you've heard this one before. And I dreamt that one day, she too, would have a happily ever after story to tell. <gasps> Always one more twist, eh, hey, Papa? After all, a great story always leaves room for a sequel. You can make your stories real, Nina. Yes, you can. But you must remake and remake them, over and over, as the sea changes and you change with it. And after every plank and nail is replaced, still, the story sails on. How oh, I've missed you. Luckily, I was able to give you a bit of an upgrade before Nina takes over the family business. Uh, adventure. Le Temeraire. Mom. Oh, I wish you could see it. I'm here, darling. You were there until the very end of my story, my darling daughter. Now it's time for yours. We are all together now, Nina. Your work for us is done. It's time to set a new course for yourself. 
Well, darling, where will you go? Everywhere. Now then, stop me if you've heard this one before. So, there I was, 